Greetings, folks. We're off to the weed store. Oh, well, we still got them. And by that, I mean, I think shit's gonna change pretty hard when uh, marijuana is actually legal in Canada. Which is coming up in the next couple months, I'd say. A lot of the places that are operating right now will probably have to close down because they won't be legit. And a lot of these places are operating uh, really nice businesses, so it'll, it'll be a shame. I can't remember what the population of Souk is right now, but I'm willing to say about 15,000. four weed stores. I only go to one, but you're supposed to call them uh, cannabis dispensaries or something like that, but sounds too modern to me. I'll show you in a later video, probably later today, but I did finally get some uh, micrometers so I can do a proper measurement for the bore gauge and some, get some uh, definitive numbers out of that system. Been playing around with it a little bit, trying to you know, get a feel for it. So that would be good. I went to a place yesterday to buy these micrometers and it's called KMS Tools. I think they're a Western Canada franchise kind of thing. I forgot what this place was like. It had moved to a new location about four or five years ago. And oh my god. I used to think Princess Auto was bad, but this place has everything. In every different category. You know, including machine, uh, proper machine tools and, and blades. And, uh, I had to get my shit and get the fuck out of there. Otherwise, I'll be broke. Anyway, yeah, it was astonishing. Now that I've become reacquainted with that, I have to kind of stay out of that area of town, I think. And I don't remember the prices being that reasonable. I thought that they were kind of on the high end of things and expensive, but no, sir. It's all mill still made in China, but slightly better than, uh, well, better than the Power Fister, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I don't know, I'm feeling lazy today, so I'm trying to get motivated to get on the uh, bore measuring there. It's kind of pissing me off, taking me so long, but... Also been trying to uh, see what the wear pattern should be on a 50 year old slant. I've seen all kinds of things about how much you can uh, overbore them, but uh, nothing that really just says uh, you know if it's beyond 10 thou over that you should bore it right out. Even the service manual didn't really say at what point. Or not that I could find, anyway. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, you got people to fucking park wherever you want, you dick. It's kind of slow in there today. I should have taken you in with me. I didn't think about it. They probably don't want cameras in there, but... Jesse and I were out last weekend uh, 
over here there was a really crazy MG of some type. It looked a little custom, but it was pretty cool. Just polished, well, whatever they are, polished, you know, steel body panels and stuff like that, riveted. Looked pretty neat. Unfortunately, the wind is up, which makes it difficult for me to do my outdoor uh, filming. As I've said it before, there is nothing in this world more irritating in the audio spectrum anyway of like shitty sounding wind against a cheap microphone it just it drives me angry now, i do have a sock for you but or a uh, foamy but it only takes care of so much you know? yeah, ironically if you want to get a good recording of wind you actually have to be inside of a building Hear the wind, but it's not actually hitting the goddamn microphone. I need one of those easy up things. and easy up I can just put it over top of whatever I'm doing and you know even if it's a bit wet out it doesn't matter it's raining too hard it'd be a little noisy maybe but even for in the deep summer when the sun is hot it'd still be good for shade you know of course at that point I'd be big enough to put most of the car under but the government over in fields I noticed it's not really you no know, it's not easy up really but a canopy you know. I think it's only well, I think it's three meters by three meters what the hell's that nine by nine Last time, uh, it was the early 80s, I think, that I recall the actual switch to metric. Uh, I can't remember when Canada signed on to the SI system, but it took a while for the curriculum to catch up. And so, for that reason, I've always been kind of fucked and stuck in between the two systems, you know. And of course, up here, even though it's listed on the thing, nobody buys lumber by the fucking millimeter. It just doesn't happen. If you go into Rona or something, or tell me you want a 300 millimeter board, they'll tell you to go fuck yourself. Well, no, they'll help you, but for whatever reason, that. And I think uh, also, if yeah, Eric Glenn was telling me that a lot of, you know, plumbing fittings and all that are still uh, imperial. Still a lot of things. I mean, obviously driving the vintage cars that I do, you know, everything's imperial. But so yeah, I've, uh, I don't know. I've always felt in the middle of two worlds there, and subsequently, I'm not an expert at either of them. It kind of fucked me for both of them, right? Some little tiny ones that I saw. It's definitely new deer season. Came over. I don't know if you can see that far yet. It's alright, bud. It's alright. Yeah. What you got going on today?
All right, I will be uh, back in some capacity in a bit. Talk soon. Bye.